What's going on everybody? My name is James and today we are continuing work on the inexpensive BMW 325xi conversion. That's a mouthful. Now, in the last video you saw I took apart the front end. I took out the bumper, the crash bar, and I started to, you know, took out the headlights, everything like that. But there was still some stuff in the way. And as you can see in the past few weeks, I removed the radiator and the uh, air conditioning radiator down here as well. I still have to remove the power steering pump, but it's being very persistent because the BMW connectors are known for being notoriously broken and the plastic in the connector broke, so there's no way for me to actually get the connector off without just cutting it. So I'm gonna do that at some point. The power steering in this is already completely shot. Uh, I filled up this reservoir once, and the second I started the car, it just pissed out all of the oil right onto the alternator, and now the engine is just a gooey mess. So I'm not really worried about losing that. So whatever. There's another issue though, and that's kind of what I'm gonna to try to address partially today. I was under the car trying to remove the exhaust, and I was looking around and I realized there is a lot more attached to this engine than the normal regular variant to the BMW. Because this is an all-wheel drive model, and the way that the Germans like to design their stuff to be kind of over-engineered and a lot more structural, the all-wheel drive system in this car is built into the oil pan of the engine. So there's a drive shaft that comes up the driver's side of the motor, it goes into a small transfer case, and then the CV shafts, or the shafts that apply power to each wheel front, split off of that and they go through the oil pan to each wheel. So that means if I'm removing the engine, I have to remove the shafts going to the wheels, I have to remove the transfer case, and the drive shaft going to the transfer case. A lot more work than I was anticipating, but I think it'll be okay because that's less rolling resistance, the wheels up front will now spin freely, uh, all the power is just going to go directly to the back wheels, and there's going to be less weight because all the all-wheel drive stuff is going to be taken out. And I think that'll be okay. I, people on the BMW forums have said that removing that stuff could cause like uh, potential suspension, structural like lack of integrity. I don't believe that because I've looked at the 325i, which is the non-all-wheel drive version of this, it's almost exactly the same uh, in terms of the suspension, so I'm not concerned about that. It's not going to be a rally car or anything like that, so I'm not really worried about uh, if there is any structural integrity loss that uh, it's going to be minimized and not really a big problem. So there's a lot more work than I was anticipating, and I still only have about two and a half weeks to get as much headway as I can on this. So I'm going to try to finish taking out the exhaust, and then I'm going to start taking apart that all-wheel drive system so hopefully this engine can be out by the end of the week. We'll see how far we can get with that, but you guys are along for the ride, so let's see where I can get today. All right, so the CV shaft on the passenger side is out, and as I mentioned, as we might be able to see in here, there is that hole. Let's see if I can brighten it here. There's a hole, and that's in the bottom of the engine oil pan, and that slot is exactly where this shaft once went in. So as you can see, this was basically like a skewer going through the bottom of the engine that held it in place. Now, the only thing that really attached it suspension-wise was just a nut right in the middle of the wheel bearing here. And that really shouldn't be much of an issue that it's gone, especially since, again, I'm not doing anything crazy with this car. It's just kind of a project. So. I gotta tighten up the uh, clamp nut back there so it'll this whole assembly is stuck back onto the shock and then I'm gonna move on to the other side and we'll make some progress. The second part while I'm up on this side is the exhaust and this being a New England car we're kind of greeted with some lovely little bolts up here and they're pretty shot so I gotta figure out a way to get at some of these because as you can see like that right there. There is no way I'm getting that off normally. So we're gonna have to find some way to basically cut this and that'll allow me to get the rest of this out and hopefully we can proceed with uh, getting the exhaust out and then moving on to that wheel all the way over there. So we'll see what happens. We're making progress and uh, yeah, I'm quite happy as to how quick this is going. So let's see where this goes.
All right, so after some fighting, actually quite a lot of fighting, I have finally gotten the exhaust off, and as you can see, I started off by trying to cut the little, you know, screw hole out. That didn't work. I ended up cutting one bolt right there. I cut it right at the nut. This bolt right here just kind of pulled through because it's so rusted, it's so tiny, I was able to just pull through the hole. That one, I cut out the side and slid the bolt out. And this one up here, kind of same thing as that. The nut had become so small, I pried with a lot of force and eventually was able to pull the bolt through the clamp there. And now I've got it right there. So now that that's out, I gotta work on the motor mount, which I think is right about there for you guys. And once I get that done, there's a few other little electronic bits that I gotta undo, but pretty much this thing is almost ready to go. I just gotta, again, work on the transmission there. I gotta disconnect the drive shaft right there from the transfer case, which is that big box right there. And then everything should be pretty much loose and ready to go. So progress, progress, progress. All right, so quick status update, as you can see. The exhaust is finally all the way out. Uh, did definitely take some, a little bit of mutilation there. Uh, yeah, not really that big a deal though. Uh, it's pretty crappy and the previous owner, <laughs> it was made some interesting noises when I ran it, as you can see. It's been kind of sawzalled off. They even tried to cut it there. So it's been through a uh, little bit of the ringer there. This didn't even reach the end of the car. The end of the car was probably about another like there would normally be like the muffler here and like another like two feet of exhaust pipe. So it kind of sounded a little ratty, kind of nice, but kind of bad. But uh, yeah, this is finally out. So the car so far has been making some good progress. And as we can see again up here, give you guys a little bit of a better view of where we're at. Oof, that's a little bit dark. Let's see. There we go. So pretty much ready to get out. Uh, some engine mount stuff I need to undo. Most of the cabling is undone. I gotta go through and read the manual, make sure that I've popped out every little wiring connection to ensure that uh, there's nothing gonna be you know, holding this back. Although I'm not really worried if I snap a wire because none of it's gonna be used really anyway. So and again, we're making good progress. <laughs> I had a little bit of an odd situation happen. I think it's because of the independent suspension but uh, I checked up the back to get the exhaust out. When I brought it back down, it kind of stayed up. So I know I just got to shake it around when I put it back on the ground and it should be fine. But uh, man, if this car looked like that <laughs> all the time, that thing would be a monster truck. But uh, regardless, uh, man, it's humid. My lens is fogging up here a little bit. Uh, yeah, we're making good progress. I think I'll have this thing hopefully back on the ground here pretty soon once I get the transmission undone and we should be able to uh, continue on here. So let's see what else we can do. All right, so progress update. Uh, again, I haven't really done much more up here other than take out some more wires that I found as I kind of played around with it. Um, so that's pretty much all set to go. Again, I gotta figure out how to get the uh, passenger side engine mount to uh, loosen up. It's kind of a little bit tough. The pilot, or driver's side is done, but I don't know. We'll see exactly how that goes. Uh, it's going to be a little hard to see, but under the car, I managed to get the transmission mostly loosened up. It's on the jack there currently supporting it, just because uh, I wasn't able to get the drive shaft fully out in the way that uh, is normally recommended. So the you know engine started to slope back, but it was kind of caught on the drive shaft and I didn't think that that'd be very good for it to let the weight be supported by that. So I jacked it back up so the engine kind of came back up into its level state and now it's kind of just a matter of figuring out how to get the drive shaft to fully separate from the transmission. Uh, the propeller bolts are out so the drive shaft can spin um, independently from the transmission but uh, you can't, like the transmission has a shaft that goes into the drive shaft. It's kind of hard to describe, but um, you kind of need a lot of lateral play in the drive shaft. You kind of need to push it back and then down to be able to get it out. So that's the issue that I'm running into right now. Once I'm able to get that sorted out, 
uh, the transmission should just kind of be able to uh, flop down. I can then, once I get the drive shaft out that comes up to uh, the transfer case here, uh, the bolts on that are a little bit tough because they're kind of starred, meaning that they're going to strip really easily if I use regular sockets. I need to find a different set of sockets for that. Once I get that out, I can get access to the clutch cylinder in the transmission. I can get that out. Then I can get up to the shift linkage, get that out, and then this thing should be free and we'll be good to go. So that'll probably be tomorrow, Saturday, and uh, hopefully we can get this thing uh, all set to go. So good progress today. I'm quite happy I got the exhaust out. That thing really fought me. So now that that's all set, uh, we're in a pretty good spot. So All right, so a little bit of a progress update since the last part of this video. Last you saw, I was having some trouble with the all-wheel drive system, and I was afraid that this project probably wouldn't work. But I have some good news. The engine's out. So this took probably the greater part of three or four days trying to go through every little bit that I could find. But uh, yeah, I got the whole transmission out. You can see there's the transfer case down there. You have this drive shaft coming up from the bottom. And then this is what I was talking about. There's a differential built right into the oil pan of the engine there. And this used to have, um, I don't have them over here. Actually, I do. These have these CV shafts that went out to the wheels that would lock right into these splined nuts there. And so those used to be a pretty big problem with getting this engine out. So I had to take all that out and uh, I'm gonna be kind of modifying the transmission. I'm just gonna disconnect the axle from the transfer case there and just leave the transfer case on there because I don't know how different everything is. Um, in terms of switching up this transmission with like a regular one. So what I'm trying to say here is if I take off the transfer case, I don't know what that's going to do to the rest of the drivetrain. I don't know if I need a new drive shaft and stuff, but that's an extra cost that I don't really want to go through. So I'm probably just going to try to make it work and hope that the transfer case isn't a huge loss of power and efficiency. But as you can see, this thing is quite a behemoth. And exactly as I expected, it's, you know, it's an inline six, so it's a very long motor. And that's what really made this troubling to get out. As you can see, there's like this lip, which I know is removable, but I just, I couldn't get it out for the life of me. So it was really difficult to try to lift the engine up when this and also the transmission, the top of the transmission kept hitting the inside of that hump. And so as you try to lift it up, it would just start to pivot and catch and the whole car would come up with it. And that was a pain. One other thing that I forgot was the AC line right there coming from the car. Let's see if I can get on the other side of the crane here. It was connected to the AC compressor, which that's how it should be. But I kind of forgot about that. So I kept jacking up the engine and it kept twisting to the side. It was pulling to the side. And it took me a while to realize that this line right here was still connected to the compressor, which was mounted right there on the motor. Three bolts that came out and the whole thing kind of loosened up nicely so it's pretty much free as you can see the gear <laughs> lever is right there so that's out um everything is pretty much good to go all the vacuum lines all the electronics are disconnected so <laughs> if you're in the market for a new bmw motor let me know because this thing while it has a lot of miles it ran great i actually have a video of it running i'll put it here um yeah it ran smoothly it just had a little bit of an issue with idling which i'm gonna guess is likely linked to this Vanos pump right up there because I know that changes the valve timing and stuff. And when these things go bad, it is kind of a problem for the engine. So I'm guessing that's probably what the issue was or just a bad mass airflow sensor, something like that. Regardless, I'm not using this engine anymore. So it doesn't really matter to me, but if you want it, <laughs> it'll be yours for a pretty fair price, I'll say. So the next step that I gotta do is put the subframe back together. Um, that was my solution to getting the engine out, was to drop the subframe about six inches so the oil pan could then clear because um, it kept getting caught there. So I lowered that, I could pull the engine out and uh, now it's out, but I need to put the subframe back together so I can put these wheels back on, put the car back on the ground and roll the chassis out a few feet so then this way I can get this hunking probably like seven foot mass on the ground and start taking it apart so I can put the engine somewhere and start working with the uh, electric motor in that transmission. So 
slow but significant progress and I'm quite happy with where this is. This was extremely stressful and if you guys are doing this, don't get the all-wheel drive car. Please don't do that. It's made a lot of extra hassle that I don't want you guys to have to go through. So, uh, but that's, that's where I'm at today. I'm very happy with where we've ended up here and I have a lot of cleaning up to do, but I'm gonna leave that for tomorrow because I am shot, but I'm happy with where we are. So I'll hit this tomorrow and see what we can do. Hopefully we can make some even more significant progress, but I am so happy with where we are today. So I hope you guys are as interested in the rest of this project as I am. I'm excited to get to the electrical components. I should be getting the controller at the end of this week if it's ready by then. And we should be in a very good spot to get this maybe rolling by the time I have to leave in about two weeks. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, again, subscribe so you don't miss these further updates and check my blog out where I'll post a lot more of the nitty gritty information on this kind of stuff and uh, other stories that aren't fitting for a whole video. So check that out. And I do also have a Patreon link down below if you guys wanna to donate to help out this project. There's been a lot of little costs that come up that I have not really anticipated. Um, especially stuff relating to like battery cables and charging and everything like that. There's just things that uh, copper is so expensive and <laughs> it just keeps going up. So every moment I wait, it keeps getting worse. So uh, I got to invest in that pretty soon so I can get this thing up and going. So I don't know. We'll see what we can end up with. Uh, like I said, I'll leave this for tomorrow and see what I can do, but I'm happy with where we are. So again, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.